are wearing tonight, I look forward to seeing the rest of you wearing tomorrow. The Empress of Fashion herself, the Duchess of Devonshire. the script for it, I, I, the first thing about Georgina that really struck me was just how incredibly lonely this woman was, you know, and it's constantly surrounded by so many people and yet entirely alone. And I think, you know, she, she was, or I decided she was very much somebody that just tried to grab onto any kind of love, attention that she could possibly get. And, and the friendship with Bess sort of comes at a, a point when, you know, she's been living with this man that doesn't talk to her, that doesn't, that they have basically no relationship for a number of years. And all of a sudden this woman comes in who is interested in her and who wants to talk to her and who wants to teach her things and, and who shows her love. And very much Bess teaching Georgina that, that, that there is enjoyment to be had in an act that I think that she'd never realised that there was, there was any pleasure in whatsoever. So I, I thought that it was a really interesting turn within the relationship and the fact that it's a woman. Um, I, I think that Georgina, I decided uh, that she was, very, I mean, that she did love her very much. Marriage then, especially within the aristocracy, was one based more on a business deal than it was based on love and passion, and so you were able to have your love affairs elsewhere. And with women teaching women how to enjoy themselves and their body sexually, um, it was something that I think shows kind of how, how beautiful their relationship was. But you could also say that it was partly best having uh, a sexual power over G as well as other forms of power. The, the basic facts of their relationships are documented and then yeah. what actually happens in these private bedrooms and hallways <laughs> and stuff is, the stuff is the stuff of our creative imagining. The current Duchess of Devonshire actually took me um, into one of the rooms and showed me some of uh, Georgina's things which I could actually look, look through which was fantastic because you know, she, she was a very famous fashion icon. Um, and, and so and the opportunity to work uh, with, with Michael O'Connor who is a tremendous talent, was, was amazing. They weren't particularly comfortable, um, I don't think. Um, but, you know, there, there's, there is, it, it was very simply the fact that, you know, you wear a corset and you can't catch your breath. So, so anything, any emotions are much more heightened because you can't, you can't calm them down. So they were, they were very helpful in the portrayal of the characters. Yes, we had to be sewn in to some of them, which they would have actually been. They would have been sewn in and cut out. Which is very difficult in a, a moment of passion to undo <laughs> rapid pace without looking ridiculous. It was he they were very heavy as well, so many layers to them and, and so much detail. And it, having to find different gestures and postures to stand in and sit in that we could sustain for long periods of time without hurting ourselves. He was wearing during the sex scene. He, I was luckily fully clothed, and he got to wear um, and he got to wear a skin-coloured nappy. And normally, you know, these so the scenes sex would be aren't. In the same film. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and then they're never the best thing. So you do, you are meant to be very supportive of each other, but he did come out in a skin colour nappy, and I just completely lost it. I will see to it that you will never see your children again. This will be the mistake of your life. <laughs>